machining a rotor. Mount the locator onto the arbor shaft. Mount the spacer. Mount the spacer with built-in aligning mechanism. Mount the arbor nut. And firmly tighten in place with a wrench. Wipe any debris from the collar and spindle. Mount the rotor onto the spindle shaft. Mount the centering cone. Hand tighten the locking nut against the cone. Firmly tighten the locking nut with the spanner wrench. Mount the silencer band and double check to make sure it's securely fastened. You are now ready to machine the rotor. Turn on the spindle motor. Turn the cross-feed handwheel clockwise until the cutter is halfway across the face of the rotor. Turn the cutter handwheel until the cutter just touches the surface of the rotor. Zero the cross-feed handwheel micrometer. Back off the outside cutter from the surface of the rotor. Zero and back off the inside cutter. Bring the cutters in just past the edge of the rotor face. Adjust each micrometer clockwise to remove approximately five to six thousandths of material and then tighten each cutter locking knob. Tighten the spindle locking knob. Tighten the locking knob on the cross feed handwheel. Set the feed speed to four to six. Set the feed selector switch to the rotor position and start machining the rotor. Notice how quiet the machine runs. Note that the machine is feeding properly if the cross feed hand wheel does not turn while machining. When complete, place the feed selector switch in the neutral position and turn off the main spindle motor. Check the machined surface. If your cutting bits are good and you have set the feed rate at five or below, the finish on your rotor should be excellent. When the machining is complete, remove the silencer band. Loosen the nut on the hubless adapter and remove the adapter nut. Remove the centering cone. Remove the rotor. You can leave the locator on the machine as long as you're doing hubless work. 